What's going on YouTube? We got another banger for you. We are on site with Innovate Coatings. We're gonna be showcasing his install. It's a massive countertop build, prep, and coat, and top coat. Lots of stuff going on on this. New construction, so they're in there right now. We just got here. We're gonna run in. It's probably loud right now. I can hear them in there working. We'll get some footage now, and then we'll see if they're, they're down to stop, which they usually are and then we'll kind of talk through the process, bring you guys up to speed. All you contractors, you're gonna to wanna to watch this. You're gonna see how easy it is to make lots of money installing these countertop kits and DIYers. You're gonna see how simple it is to do it yourself. So let's, let's check it out, we'll head on in. weather strip this yeah and the chi the things that sit in they're like inch they're right there. so they're at least an inch plus some troughs i guess oh uh, like ice troughs or something yeah check this out guys this is freaking awesome look at all the custom stuff they got going on here imagine pricing out like granite or real stone counters to do something like this you're talking big money right here a lot of cutouts massive sections cantilevered edges. I mean, look how thick these, these faces are, right? What is that, two and a half inch, yep. three inch? Three. And then we got, what do we got here? Six, no. five and a half, four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, this is cool, man. What a sweet building. This is gonna be beautiful. So grays, blacks, right, whites. Black, white, and like that. Stone kit process, this is gonna be awesome. So obviously they're prepping right now. So they built this for you guys? Yeah, his cabinet guy did. Okay, so yeah, that's awesome. So you just show up, prep, fill seams, nail holes. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about this. We got a not nice- Not ideal situation. Yeah, not ideal, but we got ways to do this, right? Cause this is gonna be coated. This is gonna be coated. And then we're gonna pull tape, right? That's our stone kit process. It's gonna wanna drip down. We'll, we'll address that when it comes. So what are you doing right now? Are you just standing? Just getting ready for Bondo, helping roll this edge a little bit. The bottom edge? Yep. Nice. Did you router this or did they? I had them route that. Okay, so they already routered this, so make sure when you guys are prepping, right, you never want to coat a square edge. We want something to let that material flow over nice, so the edge has already been routered. Same with the bottom, it'll want to lift. You know? Yeah, and so Brian was just saying, he also sands the bottoms as well, right? You want, just a little. if you leave a square edge on the bottom, it'll tend to build up a bead on the bottom, and you have to come back and sand those down. So he's got a nice rounded edge here. Outside corners, rounded. We'll probably we'll probably hit some of this right here, right? See how it's a sharp peak, you know. Still some fine tuning, but yeah, this is cool, man. This this thing feels stout, dude. So you can tell two three quarter inch, two three quarters, yeah. Two three quarter inch sheets screwed together. They probably glued it, and built their face out, right? So it's like a cantilevered edge. Very cool. Brad nailed this in. Um, yeah, so they're just prepping today. We're going to pretty much film them prepping, maybe send Kyle out here, help them. Um, but James will come back, um, fil film everything they're doing. They got a bond to all the seams, nail holes in the top, caulking on the back edge. So we can run around there and show you that. And you see the gap back here. So we always paintable latex caulking, just fill that in, right? If you have big gaps, like an in half inch gap, you can put a, uh, What's that stuff called? Like Backer rod. Back rod. It's like a foam, round foam tube you can stuff in there and then you can caulk it. It's a lot easier than trying to bondo back here, right? We're just trying to keep product from going there. And then, yeah, they're doing backsplash like Brian just said. So yeah, he's got all the plastic down on the ground, plasticed off all the cabinets. Everything's ready except just, just the prep as far as bondo, sanding router the, the bottom edges, corners. And so, yeah, we'll just kind of film the process. Um, show you guys that, but yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool setup, man. All right, the next step in the process is we're gonna be bondoing any seams and looks like we have screw holes, nail holes, any, any type of imperfections in the top, we're gonna be using bondo. 
When you guys are using Bondo, you want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area because it does have a really harsh smell. And you want to mix this up in really small batches because it has a very short working time. We're talking about maybe five, six minutes before it's rock hard. So we have most of the nail holes in the seams uh, filled with Bondo. The next step in the process, we're just gonna be sanding everything flush. All right, guys, it's pour day. We got a lot going on today. We're going to be covering a lot of stuff. You can always rewatch it. Just make sure you're paying attention for every step. So what we're doing today is I'm going to go over all the prep that they did yesterday. We got footage of that. I'll just kind of talk through that. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the single items that Brian ordered off the site to do this counter. And then I'm going to talk about mixing station. And pretty much we're going to film this raw. James is going to be walking around filming pretty much everything. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff things that come up, things that you guys need to look out for. Tomorrow, you guys are top coating tomorrow, right? Yeah. So we'll try to make it out tomorrow to show you guys top coat, but that's, that's relatively simple. So first thing I'll go over is all the prep stuff they did. So you can see everything's bondoed, right? This is all the bondo material. So all the seams are filled, faces, right? Seams in the faces are filled, sanded. And so what I like to do after bondo and then sanding is run my hand across everything. Sometimes you won't notice a ridge of material that you didn't sand all the way, but you'll be able to fill it. So I like to run over it with my hand. Paintable latex caulking, like I talked about, right? No point in putting Bondo in there and trying to sand that flush. They're getting backsplash anyway, so that's all gonna be covered. We just don't wanna lose resin down the back side. Obviously the tape plastics down, obviously missed that. Now, probably wouldn't leak through that, it's pretty tight, but we don't wanna assume it will. So we're gonna just rub some paintable caulking in there. Again, we're just trying to fill that seam up. And this will be a cool little thing for you guys to see how we do this, because it's obviously gonna flow into this counter and we don't want it to flow into the counter to where it just muddies out this section. So we have a kind of a way to try to minimize that. That's pretty much prep. So our plan is since this is such a massive counter and there is some low spots where the counter kind of kind of the, the level is a little off. It wants to taper one way and the other. So what we're gonna do, since this is such a big pour and we're gonna put so much product down, we're gonna run our weather stripping on the edge, okay? And then we're also gonna tape the face like we usually do, right? We're gonna run two, two rows of tape. We're also gonna have the weather stripping. We're gonna get it poured. We're gonna pull the weather stripping, let it flow to the tape. And then by about that time, we're hoping it's set up enough to where we can pull the tape because I don't want to have any blowouts. What'll happen is if you have a low spot or the material wants to run to one section, it's going to build up there and it'll tend to push over the tape 
or seep through it and then it'll blow out and just start leaking resin. So we wanna avoid that. Again, the main reason is because there is some, some slopes on this countertop. One of the biggest ones is right here. This counter is perfectly level. And then from this seam right here, it tapers off. And so we're probably gonna go two rows of weather stripping on this one, because again, we don't want it to all build up here and blow out or make a different design. And so that's kind of the plan. Brian's going around wiping everything. Um, that's, that's crucial, right? We wanna make sure we clean the counters because we've sanded it, we put the Bondo on. And so we wanna make sure they're really clean. And the main, main thing again on cleaning also is the faces, right? Because we're gonna be taping to the face. And if you don't clean the face well, once you prime it, you put tape on the primer. When you go to pull that tape, it can pull the primer off of the wood. And so we gotta make sure these faces are really, really clean. I'll kind of go over the products that Brian ordered. Um, and so if you want a, a simple kit, you can just order our stone kits, right? They come with primer, epoxy, top coat if you choose that, and then whatever colors. And so one stone kit will do 50 square feet and it uses three gallons of epoxy. And so what he did, he just went onto our store, has 163 square feet. So he opted to get enough product to coat 200 square feet. And so we have four three gallon kits, right? Four times 50 square feet is 200. So he has four three gallon kits of clear. Our metallic epoxy comes in clear. And then we have four of our jet black pigments, okay? So one of these pigments goes to each three gallon kit. We got our black primer. He just ordered a floor kit. We'll, we'll uh, measure it out, right? We don't need the whole floor kit because that'll do about 500 square feet. And then the top coat, another floor top coat, measure that out, right? He doesn't need 500 square feet. And then we're doing a lot of effects. So he's got, I think, 20 of each. So we got 20 silver effects and 20 white effects. So that's basically the kit. Kyle and Mark are gonna mix one three gallon kit each. We'll batch it up. Me and Brian will just start dumping it out and then they're gonna mix the other two, three gallons and dump it out. It should be a very smooth process. Biggest thing is make sure you have enough people on, a, on the job. It's always good to have a designated mixer and then designated pour, right? You don't wanna have to pour a kit out, stop, go back and mix because once we do the first one, that stuff's gonna be sitting on the counter for quite a while. By the time they get the next one mixed, right? You don't, wanna, you don't want too much time to pass. We wanna do this stuff kind of in a fluid motion where we're not stopping. Also doing some bathroom counters. Biggest thing is you wanna make sure stuff's level when you coat it, right? Since we're coating this off the counter, he took the time, he put some paint sticks, he got these perfectly level because if you don't have the counter that you're coating level, the material's gonna to wanna to run to the low spot and a lot of times that can mess up your design. And so always spend the time to level it. All right, so we got the primer down. It took us like 15 minutes to prime 163 square feet. So what Brian's doing right now with the dry roller, so I don't know, can you pick this up, James, so you can see how it's, maybe come over here. Yeah. Yeah. So like right here, everywhere the Bondo's at, it's not as porous as the wood. So the primer will just sit on there a little longer. Everywhere the wood's at, it kind of soaks in. And so he's just going around dry rolling everything to kind of help flash it off. And then we can put a fan get some air moving across this, it'll dry out even faster. But by the time we're probably ready to go and start mixing, this will be ready to put tape on, do our weather stripping, and we'll go over all that next. But we're just kind of fine tuning. Make sure you guys roll underneath your edges when you're priming. But yeah, pretty fast process. And so we'll go over, once this dries out a little bit, we'll go over taping the edge and then the weather stripping. All right, so we got the fans going on the background. This thing's pretty much 95% there and what we can do instead of just waiting around is we can get the resin poured out the part uh, A's and then we can pigment the part A as well and so that's what they're going to do they're going to start pouring out the part A in the first two kits we're going to make add the jet black pigment get that mixed in and so when we're ready to go all they have to do is add the hardener and then it just cuts out time right and so there's always something you can usually do while you're waiting for stuff to dry all right so we waited like 20 25 minutes maybe primer is really tacky right if I touch it but it doesn't pull up primer so it's not wet it's just really tacky this is a perfect time to get the coating on so what we're going to do now is we're going to run weather stripping around all the edges even the edges here right we're going to leave the weather stripping here they have flanges that go out past the boxes that sit in here so it'll cover that 
and then we don't want to coat inside here because they won't fit they're really snug and so we're just going to leave the weather stripping on these so this is the weather stripping we use 3 16 tall 3 8 wide and then really simple to put on so when we put it on we want to make sure we're right to the edge especially around these guys where we're leaving it these guys will hang it in a little bit yeah you want to hang it in so we'll hang it in just a little bit on these just on these yep these guys this side we're fine okay and then on on this outside edge we want to be right on the edge All right, so we got the tape done. Now, I do want to point out that we don't have to do both of these. You can do either or. We've done them both ways. Um, on thin counters, right, or maybe you're doing a sample board, we like to do weather stripping because there isn't enough um, wood or whatever to tape, get a decent amount of tape on that face. And so we, we'll do weather stripping. If we have thick edges like we do here, we could have got away with just doing the, the, the tape, two rows of tape. All right, so like I said, we want to move quick, get the stuff poured out as fast as we can. A few things I want to point out, right, is number one, we don't want to pour too much out in one section. So you're constantly going to be see us jumping around, pouring beads out, right? And if Brian pours a, a vein here, I don't want to pour another vein next to it. We want to split the gaps everywhere because that, that bead's going to spread out and fill more of the counter. And so we want to constantly be jumping around and getting product over the whole counter. We don't want to pour out, you know, four gallons out here, two gallons over there, and we got a gallon or whatever, right? We never wanna to have too much resin in one spot. So you've constantly seen us move around, pour out in different sections, and we'll just talk through it as we go. But so what Brian did on his first pour, he's getting ready to do, added some white to the top, and then he's gonna dump that out, and we'll kinda of judge from what that's looking like, what we wanna do on the next pours.
All right, so we got that first two three gallon kits poured out and you'll notice we have product over all of the countertops, right? We didn't just pour all those kits out on this big island, the front island. We jumped around and poured them all out over the whole project, I would say. Um, and that's gonna give us uniformity of color, right? And then when we were down to like two buckets, Kyle and Mark jumped back, started mixing the next two three gallon kits because again, this is this has been set, sitting in a bucket. We've dumped it out, now it's sitting here, so we wanna move quick so they blend together and mesh together, right? And so now, we're gonna be more precise on our pores, and we wanna start hitting spots that are opened up where there's no product, right? So obviously we have the vein pattern flowing all the way down. So we'll probably pour some out in these spots, and then we'll probably still run some from end to end. But again, our next focus now is to jump around and pour out product in all the open areas. So once we're done, happy with the design, the next step is if you wanna create some cells, some more wild effects to that top, you can spritz 91% or higher isopropyl, and it'll kinda of create some craters, some dispersing effects throughout it. And so he's kinda of just randomly hitting some spots, he doesn't wanna hit everything. And then what we'll do is come back, mist it with denatured alcohol. What that does is, is eliminate all these bubbles, helps the surface lay out glass smooth. So if you don't want the dispersing effects, you would just simply mist the surface with denatured alcohol. And again, that'll pop any of the bubbles because we're creating bubbles with this process because we're constantly pouring resin onto the counter over each over resin that's already on the counter. We're trapping air into it. So naturally we're gonna create bubbles. And so the resin's awesome. It'll, it'll, they'll just pop once we hit them with denatured. You'll see these bubbles just start to pop. Now, the trick on this is we don't wanna flood the surface. We don't wanna muddy out the veins. And so we wanna hit it light. And then if we need to come back and hit it again, we can. So we'll kind of show you guys, you can see all the bubbles and stuff in right here. So when I hit it, and then what we're gonna do is pull our weather stripping because the resin's starting to set up, let it flow to the tape, and then we'll just wait for the right time. We'll start pulling tape and get these edges coated as well. All right guys, so there it is. Project's poured, edges are coated, scrape the drips. Brian and them are gonna hang out, clean up a little bit. We're gonna head out. They'll come back tomorrow, sand any imperfections. Top coat, if we can make it, we'll try to make it. If not, we'll have him film it on his phone so you guys can see that. 
the cool thing about this process is you'll get veins going down the side at an angle. Like, so we got this vein coming down the edge at an angle, gives the look of real stone cut out of a slab. Yeah, turned out awesome. I think we start at like 10.30, it's one o'clock, so it's, or no, we start at 10. It's one o'clock, this took us three hours from, <clears throat> I would say probably from when we started cleaning the counters, pr we primed it, we mixed the resin, we coated it, we did all the taping, built those, the dams on the edges, took us three hours to coat this whole, whole countertop section. Again, it was 163 square feet. We used four three gallon kits of resin to coat this. We pretty much used all of it, didn't we? Yeah, we also coated these little, little bathroom tops as well. So yeah, successful project. Biggest thing guys on these kits is get the product dumped out of the bucket as fast as you can. Um, don't let them sit there and then jump around. Make sure you're pouring out resin evenly throughout the countertop that way you don't pour too much resin out in one section and not have enough though. Those are two vital steps. Projects this big, it's good to have some extra hands, designated mixers, designated guys to pour it out. Um, it's gonna make it go a lot smoother. sand everything, sand the edges, got all the imperfections out. Some of these spots, like right here is where it's set up a little faster than the rest. Because remember, we poured it really thick here because we have these two chunky faces we had to do. And so there was some spots that kind of set up. And so he came back, sanded those, and he's doing the matte urethane. The reason he likes to sand when he's doing matte is because sometimes you'll see little speckles where the matte urethane didn't cover the glossy top. And so it'll be matte. And then depending on what way you look at it, angle you look, you might see a few glossy speckles. And so he always likes to sand when he's doing matte to minimize that. The other option is you just do two coats. Some people love the look. It almost looks like sparkles in the counter because you have this matte finish and then you have these little speckles of gloss throughout it. Just depends on, on you know customer preference, right? But it is good to let them know, hey, if I don't sand this or uh, do two coats of matte urethane, you might see some glossy speckles throughout that, that matte urethane. So yeah, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Just cleaning up all the plastic, vacuum it, and then we'll go over mixing the top coat and applying it. We're gonna be doing nine inch rollers since this is such a big area. Nine inch rollers, dip and roll, uh, three eight snap, roller, roller hairs, and a roller tray as well. We'll come back when this project's complete. This thing's gonna be cool after footage with everything done, tables in here, all their equipment put on the counter. Um, and then obviously it's glossy right now. Once this dries, it's gonna have a matte finish. So it's gonna look like a, a honed countertop surface. It's gonna be re really cool. So we'll come back and show you guys that when it's ready. 